ladies and gentlemen, this is part two. This is part two of two. My diagnosis of the left and what I think is really holding them back. So, hope this angle is not too weird. My phone was overheating in the windshield, so got it on the steering wheel. All right, so in the first part, we talked about why I think this is a valuable perspective for a left-wing person to hear, which is that there, in my view, is a, a very big blind spot because of you know, a lack of self-awareness based on you're only hearing perspectives about your perspective from three different perspectives. Right-wing, normie centrist, and other left-wingers, right? So that's gonna limit your visibility of yourself, visibility of your ideology and what works and what doesn't work, and what Welcome can explain potentially some of the issues that you're experiencing. So that, with that being said, here's my diagnosis. So I am the fourth perspective, someone who's informed on the left-wing perspective, right-wing perspective, the centrist perspective, and who is non-partisan, non-tribal, right? I have no allegiance, right? So that gives me an edge in terms of being able to think more clearly. This is what I recognize. We're gonna start from the top and go down. Put the AC on this phone so I can put on the mount. So we're gonna start from the top down. The heart of the issue, sorry about the weird angle there, comes from the media sources, right? Ultimately, the thought leaders, right? Media sources, thought leaders, let's call it thought leaders because your media sources are representing your thought leaders, right? So what do we mean, what are we talking about? So basically, the ideas that you have, right? The leftist ideas that you have about the diagnosis of America and what is holding us back and you know what we need to do to improve things right strategies to make things better diagnosis of what is the source of our pain and suffering in this country all of those things for the most part were delivered to you by left-wing thought leaders that means left-wing media progressive media even liberal media msnbc right so all the stuff you watch, whether it's Jimmy Dore, The Young Turks, Ryan Tyler Cohen, Revolutionary Back Out Network, uh, Savvy Savs, uh, Mad Bait, whatever it is that you watch, right? Kyle Kalinske. These are the people who most likely have presented the very ideas that you now champion as your own. But have some honesty and recognize that you are not the one who came up with the ideas that you now promote and have adopted, right? These ideas were handed to you by partisan thought leaders who are, aka, mostly propagandists. Propaganda has infested America to such a degree that it's normalized to where most Americans, in my view, don't even know what the word propaganda means. Propaganda is, relevant to this conversation, media, that's, you know, the primary purpose or effect is to promote or devote an ideology, for example, right? It doesn't have to be an ideology, but in, in, in it's a context thing, right? We're talking about politics and political media, right? So in that context, propaganda would be media designed to promote or demote an ideology. For example, if my main focus on my channel is to demonize the left and either directly promote the right or indirectly through my silence, right? If all my complaints are on the left, and I hardly ever have a complaint on the right, by default, I'm promoting the right, right? All the problems seem to come from one direction, the left. So obviously one would, one would you know, take from that that the right is better, right? That's propaganda. A 
that's not news. That's not just you giving your opinion. That is propaganda. In contrast, if you are a right winger and you believe conservatism is the way, but you're not a propagandist, you may enjoy a little bit more talking about the good things of, you know, conservatism. But you will not shy away from talking about the good things from the left, right? A propagandist will promote the idea that one side is good and the other side is evil and there's nothing of value from that other side. That's propaganda, that extremist view, right? Someone who's just giving their opinion as a right winger will not be giving you the idea that the left is absolutely worthless. They will just say, hey, I like conservatism, I'm a conservative myself, right? But when the left talks about something good, you have no problem, you don't hide from it. You will mention it, talk about it. Maybe they have a good idea, but there's some issues with it. You will talk about how to improve it. The left has a good idea here, but the execution is poor. They need to make these tweaks, and it actually could be something pretty good. Propagandists, you will never want to concede that the other side has something good to offer, right? So, if you're watching media that does this from the right or from the left, you're watching propaganda, right? The other thing is, since you're promoting one side, you're not going to want to talk, you're not going to have much of an appetite to talk about the faults of that side, right? And there's levels to it, so there's different levels of propaganda, right? Some people are hardcore, or they'll never critique their side. Some will do it occasionally, right? Some will do it a little bit more than occasional. But here's the core issue. These propagandists, who are your thought leaders, who are giving you your ideas, whether they are social media influencers, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, YouTubers, news media folks, the fundamental problem starts with that these are the sources of your ideas. Why is it a problem? Because these people are predominantly propagandists, so they're not giving you an accurate perspective of the world. They're giving you a biased perspective to promote one side and promote the other. That's problem number one. So as a left-winger, your knowledge of the faults of the left is generally going to be very limited because the thought leaders that you listen to either have next to no critiques or light critiques, right? Or they only have critiques up to a point. They're not going to be as interested in critiquing the left as they are the right. So you're missing a lot of information. The views that you have are based on limited information, right? So that's one issue. Second issue is these thought leaders, regardless of the bias or not bias, are not like you. They're not in the same situation as you are, right? Generally speaking, they are elites or they are working class people on a path to becoming elites. And the most secure path, right, the way to do it is to lean in on propaganda, right? Pander to your audience, tell them what they want to hear, right? Promote the idea that they are the smart ones and their political opponents are the idiots and whatever, right? That is going to enhance their path towards becoming elites. These people make their living by themselves online. They can live anywhere in the country. They can move to the cheapest part of the country and make New York City salaries, right? So as they grow, they don't have to worry about things like healthcare, right? The kind of things that you're worried about, the job market, unemployment, right? They become distanced from your experience as they get bigger and bigger. As much as they want to deny this reality, the reality is that's gonna have a big effect on their perspective, the value of their perspectives, right? The level of disconnection from your life experiences that they have, right? The other factor is the lack of seriousness. These people that you're getting your ideas from are generally entertainers. Jimmy Dore, Brian Tyler Cohen, the Young Turks, on and on and on. Their job is to keep you watching as long as possible, keep you on their channel, keep you on the platform that their media is on as long as possible. 
That is the priority. And if it's not the priority, then they put themselves at grave risk of not being able to pay their bills and to survive. Their ability to survive is dependent on their ability to entertain you. And the most entertainment in political news is pandering propaganda. You listening to me are the smart ones, your political opponents are the dummies, right? That is the best way to achieve financial security in the influencer world, right? So you have unserious actors who are isolated from the concerns that they speak about, like they don't live it. They're not out in the streets, right? As it were, right? They're in their basements or in their fancy studios, right? Commenting about the life that you actually live. You're worried about paying the rent. You're worried about healthcare. You're worried about losing your job. You're worried about your pay. Them, not so much. So since you have people that are disconnected from your reality, who don't have the same goals as you. You want a better life. You are concerned about this country getting better. You're concerned about healthcare and minimum wage and all this kind of stuff. But the people that are giving you ideas don't really have that level of investment in these projects. So it's a conflict of interest. You want certain things, but you're forming your opinions based on information provided to you by people whose priority is entertainment, views, and clicks. So since they are unserious, and they are biased, so they're not providing you full information, then you are limited by how deep or accurate your assessment of what's wrong with this country and how we can make it better. Your position on these questions are based on information provided to you by biased, incomplete sources that have massive conflicts of interest with you. Let's go down to another layer. Something I've recognized recently. Since you are so deep down in the rabbit hole of these isolated perspectives provided to you by these influencers, and since it's very profitable to make things as emotional as possible, Get you angry and ah, look what these people are doing and ah, end of democracy and blah, 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 white nationalist. Blah. Now, don't get me wrong. There's certainly things in this country, more than a few things to be angry about and to get passionate about. But remember, the goal here is to entertain. So, for example, racism—a real issue, right? There are parts of racism that are worth getting passionate about, right? But since the ones talking to you about racism are not focused on racism, they're focused on profits, right? They will get you angry about racism in times where you should be. Because for example, situations where there is no racism, they will make it be about racism because that's gonna get the most entertainment value. So you have your anger and frustration being misplaced and toyed with, right? So here's the next layer. getting your information from these sources, right? Most of you are not used to having any good faith critiques of your ideology. The critiques are either bad faith from the right or uninformed critiques from the liberals, right? So, you have been put in this emotional bubble of anger and frustration and passion and anger for all, right? And you've heard so long, over and over again, these phrases and terms and this is what we need to do. Right? And since you're focused on your own survival, many of you are not taking the time to really look into these things and form your own independent opinions, understand things yourself. You're not going to recognize the failures of the things that are being promoted to you. Right? So you have this sort of astroturf influencers in a way, pushing ideas that they don't really care about, they're not really serious about. You adopting them and not really paying attention to the outcomes Right? You're not really digging in, you're not investigating. You're relying on these thought leaders to do that for you. But they're not interested in doing that. So if they're not looking into it and you're not looking into it, how can you ever know about the failures? Right? All you're gonna hear is the good parts. Any failures you hear about is not enough. We need to do more of this, right? That's the, that's the failure you're gonna hear. You're not gonna get people deep diving into 
what works and what doesn't work about these programs, how can we make it better? That's not a very profitable conversation. That's not something that you're gonna get a lot of clicks from, right? So there's not gonna be a lot of conversation about that. It's just gonna be a conversation about, we need to do this, we gotta do this, we gotta do this. Okay, we're doing it, but we need to do more of it, more of it. Very one-dimensional, that's the perspective that you're getting. In one little bubble, you're not looking in the mirror to see all the stains and blood and whatever, right? And the people that are talking to you, they're not interested in these things. They just want your clicks and views. So they're not saying anything to you. So you don't see it. They're not talking about it. So you're oblivious to it. But you know who isn't oblivious to it? The normies. This video is getting too damn long. So we're gonna split it into three parts. So this is part two of three. If you enjoyed it so far, click on the like button, subscribe, and see you in part three. This is the Debate Me channel. Debate me in the comment section below.